Today, the Tamwada Report comes to you from the beautiful Mount Elgin, Bungoma County. And what is the reason for this? Well, it is no secret that the threat to Kenya's main water catchment areas is on the increase each year. It is for this reason that events like the Elgin 4x4 Challenge have been created. Championed by adventure-seeking Kenyans, their goal is to bring sensitization of this plight through sports tourism. But first, let's have our fact sheet. Kenya has five main water towers. These include Mount Kenya, Abadez, Mau Complex, Chiringani Hills, and Mount Elgin. Combined, these water catchment areas amount to less than 2% of the total land area of the country, but are still important to Kenya's economic growth. These water towers are not only an important source of water for most urban areas, but are also a source of livelihood to a number of rural residents. Moreover, the towers are vital to Kenya's economy since they contribute to the country's energy production. This is through provision of water that is used at hydropower plants. In addition, these towers are major contributors to the tourism and agricultural sectors. Mount Elgin, which is located to the north of Lake Victoria, reaches an altitude of 4,321 meters above sea level and forms the upper catchment area for two major rivers, that is Nzoia and Takwal rivers. It also provides water to the Malakisi River. Its ecosystem strides across eastern Uganda and western Kenya. The diverse terrain and dramatic ascents of altitude combined with vagaries of rainfall and weather produces unique vegetation, caves, valleys, streams and diverse flora and fauna. Most notably, Mount Elgin is home to the mountain elephant. Unfortunately, with increased deforestation, areas surrounding Mount Elgin have been experiencing rising temperatures and decreased rainfall. This poses a major threat to the socio-economic activities in the western region of Kenya with regards to water supply for domestic and agricultural use. The 039 Elgin 4x4 Challenge is a four-wheel drive competition that takes place at Chepkitale region of Mount Elgin, Bungoma County each year. Just like the famous Rhino Charge that is held annually at the Abadez, the Elgin 4x4 Challenge is a motorsport event that entails individuals with four-wheel drive vehicles coming down to Mount Elgin and taking part in a string of challenges over a three-day period. These vehicles are daily use cars, whereby everybody who uses his car on daily basis comes, uses his car for the Elgon 4x4 challenge, but most important thing is not to spoil his car. The event saw a number of off-roaders as well as four-wheel drive enthusiasts from all over the country converge at Labot Primary School for three days of pomp, color and excitement. The people from Mosingishu County, Kiambu County, we have guys from Naro County, we have guys from Elgeo Maro County, Nandi County are also here. So it has brought quite a number of people. We have people all the way from Uganda. We have even friends who want to come to participate in our event, all the way from South Africa, from Sudan, from Rwanda. In other words, this thing is growing. But how did it all begin? Charles Mulupi is one of the directors at 039 Explorers, the founders of the event. As friends, we came together and uh, decided let's go to the mountain and find some place and do some camping. Mm -hmm. Along the way, we saw a lot of destruction mm -hmm. on the forest. Then going further up in the mountain mm -hmm. to the area called Labot, mm -hmm. we noticed the beautiful scenery up there. Then we were taken aback and wondered, what is the disconnect? How come this other end is uh, more green and more natural than the lower side? It dawned on us that the rate of destruction of this mountain is so much that if we are not careful, in the next few years, we will not have a forest at all. We decided to make it a sport event that can be used to bring together people who are into conservation so that we can bring that mountain back to life. The most important thing when we people came together was conservation. We come from Bungoma County. 
what we're looking at at the moment, we really feel it because down like right now, it's supposed to be very wet. But right now, look at it. It is so hot. Why? The forest has been cut down. We need to plant trees. We need to plant more than 50 million trees in this forest to bring it back to where it was. And so the 039 explorers rose to the challenge and in 2016 organized the first ever Elgin 4x4 challenge with the aim of sensitizing the public on the menace of deforestation facing Mount Elgin. We started off about six of us. What happened was so simple. It is getting a friend who was a four-wheel drive. We talked to him and planned for the event around this time. So it was so simple. A friend talks to another friend. Then we started growing in numbers. Right now we're so proud to have the numbers, whereby people are coming from different parts of the country to come for our 4x4 challenge. But we also have fans. Fans who are coming here, they don't have the four-wheel drive cars, but they are coming first of all to cheer us up and secondly also to conserve the environment. But what does it take for one to participate in this event? We've not been very strict on, uh, on entry requirements, but basically you need a 4x4 uh, car and then we're also concerned about safety so we need uh, you just make sure that your car is, is is in good condition we look at the engine uh, you know just to make sure that everything is working well participants this year were faced with three major challenges which included the Nyayo T zone challenge and the dreaded Darajaya Mungu challenge if you reverse you lose marks and then if you touch the tap where we have tapped you lose marks if you avoid the obstacle that we've created or, you know, that we have marks, that one, you, you definitely lose marks or a mud hole or something like that. We can have maybe a kilometer or so that will cover a challenge. And within that kilometer, we shall usually spread the judges and the marshals as well so that we make sure that we capture every moment. We always have an ambulance on standby and uh, sometimes not just one. We have uh, more than one ambulance and uh, medics. We usually have very challenging terrain. Whether somebody is challenging or not, when we are heading to the challenge or from the challenge, we 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 have put it as a, uh, a rule that we don't leave any brother or uh, sister behind. Despite the danger, the drivers were still eager to put their skills and vehicles to the test. Today we are hoping for the rains because uh, the rain is what determines, uh, makes the challenge even harder. It's not fun without it, it well, rain. No, we need lots and lots of rain. I need a place where I can get stuck, reverse once, twice, you know, maybe break something out of the car. That's what 4x4 is actually. For the drivers, participating in this event is quite expensive. In addition to having a four-wheel drive, Participants have to spend at least 200,000 Kenya shillings to have their cars ready for such an event. What I've done is my car is I've done what I did a lift on it, a three inch lift, robs, uh, shocks and coil, added another tab on it. However, one would argue that instead of using a lot of money modifying these cars, one could redirect these finances directly to conservation efforts. But Laban Kiprotic, an economist and a member of the Ogiek community, begs to differ. The best method of conservation here is about preserving and land use. The land use of the people, the Ogier community, the land use is about conservation. When somebody prepares a beehive, places it on the tree, that beehive becomes a home to his bees. So basically that person will not destroy the, the tree. In, in another way, conservation is more about creating awareness of the need on how to conserve. Conservation is not, not only planting trees. When I invest my money on my car, I'm, I'm marketing the area. Chapitale is a big area. It has an untapped potential in terms of tourism. And if we come with the aspect of ecotourism, whereby there's a community inside, there will be more revenue. And the revenue coming to the people means that people will not see, will not change their mindsets. No culture changes. People, are, people change their mindset. Now the society is more money-oriented. 
people want quick money. So people have interacted with other communities. When somebody sees a cedar tree, he sees money. So an Ogiek member started, if he starts seeing a cedar tree as money, eventually he may lose the meaning of conservation. So I, by creating this awareness, is marketing my area so that more people come, come in, we can have more ecotourism, we can have more people come and have challenges like this one. And then at the end, the CSR, people get a little money, people provide services, they get more money and they become stable and they maintain their way of life. But it is not all about putting an end to deforestation. We conserve the environment, we shall be protecting the, the jumbos of Mondelgon, that's the elephants of Mondelgon. Because if we destroy the, the environment, we may lose this, these elephants around and other animals around Mount Elgon. The Elgon 4x4 challenge is indeed an interesting way to sensitize the public on the importance of environmental conservation. But more is still to come right after the break. We only talk of Masai Mara, we only talk of Mombasa County. People do not know what is in Bungoma. Hinji Welcome back. It is said that the people who reside in these water catchment areas are to blame for deforestation, but the Ogiek community beg to differ. The Ogiek are a marginalized community who reside in Mount Elgin. They have lived here since time in memorial and in recent times have come into harsh criticism over the state of Mount Elgin. The community has been blamed for the rampant deforestation that has been plaguing the region, but contrary to popular belief, the Ogiek insists that they are actually the last line of defense. <laughs> The wild view is that people should not be living in forests and water catchment areas. They are the source of destruction. But in the other words, in, in this place, it's, it's the contrary. Within the, the areas where the community members are, the Uge community members are, there is no much difference. Uh, the area is conserved, there, are no, there is no felling of trees. A statement that the directors of the 4x4 challenge agree with. We've interrogated some of them and uh, this is what they had to say. That it is taboo in their culture to cut down a tree in the name of uh, say uh, timber or uh, charcoal. It is taboo. In fact, if you are caught, it is a disciplinary case. Ogi okay, community is such a closed up community. They feel if there's any outsider who comes amongst them, they feel threatened somehow. So they are not receptive at first. They will interrogate your intention of coming. We noticed that uh, they are born conservationists. They don't cut down trees unnecessarily unless they are putting up structures for shelter. So we felt these are the people now we can work with. Metrin who has spent her whole life in Mount Elgin further adds that the livelihood of the Ogiek is based on protecting their ancestral home and safeguarding their environment. It is this conservative nature of the Ogiek that has seen them easily partner with 039 explorers in fighting deforestation. We have community scouts. That's why I said I, I support community rangers. Our community rangers enforce the law. We have the community bylaws. The community rangers started as an initiative. They were I was sometimes back when I was coming from school. When I come back, there was an issue, tendency that we could see people coming to the forest, coming, they burn charcoal, then they go. 
Then we started apprehending them. When you apprehend somebody, tells you, who are you arresting me? Who are you? Kwa niwewe ni serikali. Terms like that. So we wanted a body that looks like it's more recognized by government. For us to protect this forest, we need to have these guys here. Now the community has uh, even sat down. They have taken their own boys and girls to go for training in Manyani as uh, rangers. These uh, boys and girls are not even on government payroll. They are giving uh, community service free of charge. And what's their work? Is they have become a uh, uh, first point of uh, contact for even KWS. So who is to blame for the deforestation? Well, the locals as well as 039 explorers believe that Kenya Forest Service is partly to blame. The life of Geek, long time ago, our grandparents used to go to the lower regions to fetch grains. But right now, people are being encouraged by KFS to, to have an area where they can plow, plant maize, plant beans, potatoes. It's normally called the Shamba system, where people are located land for tilling. So that then later they are given trees to plant, which they are supposed to take care of the trees till they mature, then they harvest the trees. Basically, harvesting a forest now and then with also some failures in the process of planting trees uh, has left the land bare. People who tend to cultivate much, they totally don't uh, have the, that knack of conservation in them. Now that is total destruction, total destruction. Now there has been encroachment, encroachment coming to this end and it was going up into the mountain. Eventually, within say under 10, 15 years, we will not have a forest here. This system has also encouraged illegal logging. Definitely this is not out of natural cause. Neither was this tree, you know, a born lamb. But the intention is very clear that uh, eventually this tree, somebody will come and cut it around. That simply means that this tree will be denied of any nutrients going up and any slight wind will bring it down and it will be cut into timber uh, and uh, you know somebody will blame it on natural causes it fell out of natural causes so we had to log it now if you look around you can see so many stumps all these all these were brought down from the same same style similar style in addition the remedy of replacing indigenous trees with exotic trees is not helping the situation. Plantations are not forest. Forests, there are some aspects of forest. A natural forest, when you talk in terms of biodiversity, it's more rich. But a planted forest, there's loss of biodiversity. Basically, we are losing our biodiversity. And another thing is the wild animals, like the elephants. The elephants cannot eat cypress or pines, but they normally eat on indigenous trees. And so, to ensure that the right kinds of trees are planted, 039 Explorers is partnering with various organizations as well as schools. 039 has developed a, a unique 10-year program. And of course, uh, every year we are going to evaluate the, the success of this. And uh, key highlights of that program is that uh, uh, there's a concept of adopt a child to adopt a tree. We bring trees to a school, talk to the principal, that we need the children to understand the essence of uh, conservation. So our fans, when they come for 4x4 four four challenge, we go to the school, every person adopts a child, and the child adopts a tree. Moreover, through the event, the organizers have been able to sensitize the locals on alternative sources of income. People are now more aware. People want to come to Labot. People want to come here and have... People come, normally we have visitors. People come, somebody comes with his family and stays at the women houses, those banters there. Uh, they buy the local boozy. They buy services. Yeah, so there is some stream of income from organized groups like the women groups. Yeah. And there is more also exposure for our people. Yeah, they are buying ideas that people can do business. The event has also attracted the attention of the county government of Bungoma. Kava County, 
tumetoa miche 1500 ya indigenous streets sana sana tumenunua indigenous streets and we have come in as partners uh, to support them as a county government we are trying to make sure that uh, we stop further deforestation and instead go for afforestation and at the same time to promote the tourism products that we have a vision that is also shared with 039 explorers who would love to see the Elgon 4x4 challenge result in eco as well as sport tourism. Bungoma County in regards with the tourism, I would say Bungoma County is the best county to be because we have so many uh, tourism attraction centers that people have not um, come to realize. We only talk of Masai Mara, we only talk of Mombasa County, yeah, and uh, people do not know what is in Bungoma. I would encourage everyone not to wait for international tourism. Tourists from other countries, tourists from uh, other areas, I would say we have to be our own local tourists. And with continued success and growth, it is the hope of the organizers that with time, Mount Elgon will return to its former glory. It's not hopeless. It's not hopeless. This is true, it is workable, but we need a lot of support. From three participants in 2016 to over 20 since then, the Elgon 4x4 challenge has indeed grown in leaps and bounds. This is encouraging to the organizers of this event and a hopeful sign for the future of this majestic place. For the Chamwada Report, I'm Michael Zimanjiki.